Hello, my name is Jacob with Smetting Performance, and today I want to talk to you about the different types of oiling systems available for your engine. Before we really get started, I want to go over the two most common or most frequently seen types of oiling systems. One is going to be what's considered a wet sump oil system, and the second is a dry sump oil system. Now there is a third which kind of falls in the middle of them and that would be an external wet sump oil system. What's the difference between a dry sump and a wet sump? A wet sump oiling system means the actual sump or volume of oil in the engine is located in the crankcase. A dry sump in oiling system means that the sump or volume of oil is not in the crankcase. The crankcase is operating in a dry sump. So. The easiest way to illustrate that is here is one of our 427 Ford crate motors. And this is a standard configuration wet sump. You can tell that because it has a large reservoir on the oil pan and it has the drain plugs on the pan. On this engine, the oil pump is located in the front right here underneath this big hump. And the sump of oil is going to be contained in the crankcase right here. So the crankcase is operating in a wet sump configuration. Next to it, we have this road race, small block Ford, a distributor in the front, not an LS. And this engine, look at its oil pan. It's completely smooth on the bottom, very low profile. Still has a drain port, but it's also got some lines coming off of it. So this type of engine, the actual reservoir of oil is not going to be contained in the crankcase. The crankcase is going to operate in a dry sump. So that road race engine that's a dry sump, all of its oil is going to be located in this large sump, which is external, not in the engine. This is either stashed hidden in the engine bay or possibly the trunk, a couple of different places you can put it. And all of its oil is going to be located in this sump right there. If we look at the physical pumps themselves, here is a standard small block Ford wet sump oil pump. It has a drive shaft that comes off of this that splines into the bottom of its distributor, which has a gear on it, which is turned by the gear on a camshaft, on its camshaft. So the camshaft turns the distributor, which has a drive shaft that turns the pump. This pump then sucks up the oil from this pickup hole, which has a pickup tube located in the engine pressurizes the oil, and then delivers it through the oil galley system. The next step up from that is going to be this style of an oil pump. This is an LS pump, and it is actually driven by these keys off the crankshaft. So it's more directly driven, and it also is much more efficient and has much higher RPM capabilities before you run into any issues. The next one is this dry sump pump. And this pump is the end-all, be-all of oiling systems. And it's going to mount somewhere external on the engine, right about here. And it will be driven off of a belt that goes on the end of the crankshaft in front of the serpentine system and will drive itself that way. One of the other advantages to this type of system is if you're at a racetrack or you've got a fresh motor, you can take the belt off, put a drill on the end of this, and turn this pump with the drill, completely pressurize the entire oiling system, pop the belt back on, start the motor, and it's ready to go. So what are the advantages that this has over these systems? And why is it better to have your oil in a dry sump for certain applications? Well, if you remember, on our wet sump, here's a 632 big block Chevy pan. All that oil is going to live in the pan underneath the rotating assembly. That rotating assembly is going to be spinning at upwards of 7,000 RPM, and it's going to act like a giant blender. And it's just going to be blending and churning all that oil, and eventually, if it gets high enough, it'll start creating air bubbles that mix with the oil. Now, fluid you cannot compress which is why we use it to lubricate, so, you know, hydraulic fluid. You can't pressurize fluid. 
All you, well, you can pressurize it, but you can't compress it. Air, you can compress though. So what happens is all those air bubbles are now mixed into the oil and your pump is going to do what's called cavitation and it will basically stop delivering oil as efficiently or effectively as it can. And you'll start to see oil pressure bleed off at very high RPM. Now obviously there are different types of pumps and every engine is slightly different so I can't tell you exactly what RPM that is. Generally on a two galley LS block it's around 7500 RPM. On these Ford pumps might be a little bit less. They're not as efficient. Um, there's no real good answer. This is where this dude enters. All of this guy's oil is living outside of the engine in this nice centrical vertical stack, right? And what this pump is going to do is it's going to suck the oil in from this large huge fitting which is going to have a hose going all the way through the car into this bottom fitting. So by the time the oil comes out of this can, goes through the hose, into this pump, it's a pure liquid. There is no air in it, there's no cavitation, there's no aeration, and this pump can deliver the exact oil requirements at pretty much whatever RPM you want. It doesn't matter. Okay? And so basically it looks kind of crazy and confusing, but you've got these two lines which are going to suck the oil from the engine out of the sump, and they're going to return it out of this port all the way through the car into this line. And then the oil is going to live in this reservoir. Then this guy is going to draw it from the bottom of this reservoir, nice pure liquid oil, pressurize it, and deliver it out of this cavity. Generally then it'll go to an oil cooler or it could go to a remote oil filter. Um, either way, eventually it's going to get plumbed back into the engine into its oil galley fitting. Pretty cool. So that's why a dry sump can turn more RPM before it hits cavitation. The second big advantage to a dry sump system is on road race or drag race cars. If you're in a road race car, think of how many G-forces those guys are pulling through the turns. The liquid in the sump is just going to go wherever gravity forces it to go. So if you're taking a hard right-hand turn, all the oil in that sump is going to eventually get pushed up against the left side of the oil pan. And if the turn is long enough and at a high enough g-force, eventually that pickup tube is going to starve out because it can't suck up the oil anymore because it's been pushed to the side of the pan. Same thing under hard, hard braking. All the oil, it's a liquid. It's just suspended in a pan. It's going to go forward. Big drag race car. It's going to all come to the back of the engine. Right? So if your pickup tube goes dry, you're going to immediately lose oil pressure and you could risk damaging the bearings or internal components of the engine. Coming back to the sump, very big vertical cylinder and it's port to pressurize the engine at the very bottom. That oil cannot go anywhere without being accurately and efficiently delivered to the engine. No matter what g-forces you do, no matter your braking, your launching, that dude is always going to be submerged in oil. It's always going to have a great supply to the pump and the pump will always be able to deliver a perfect oil flow into the engine. Now let's talk about reasons why you don't want to go dry sump. One, you've got to run lines all through your car. There's a risk there that a line might not be sealed correctly. You could have an oil leak, could cause a fire. Two, cost. This pump, don't quote me on any of this, it's about 50 bucks. This one's about 120, about $1,300. It's about $800. And we're not even talking about the mandrels, the fabricating to mount this pump, the lines, the oil cooler, the remote filter adapter. Before you know it, and, and the special oil pan. The oil pan alone is, I think that engine was around $800. So before you know it, you've got a four to $5,000 oiling system over a $150, $120, or a $50 pump. So you really have to look at what you're doing and determine, is my RPM or the G-forces that this engine's gonna see require or merit the dry sump application. In 99% of everyone's application, it doesn't. 99% of the time, a good wet sump system is gonna work perfectly fine for your street engine. It's only the very highest level of race engines that actually require a dry sump system or road race guys who have crazy G-forces for long periods of time. They're gonna require it. 
Another good reason you might want to consider a dry sump is oil pan clearance in the car. This is being a road race engine. They want this engine as low as possible in the chassis. So by eliminating the internal oil pump, the pan is only maybe four and a half, five inches deep compared to this one, which is probably eight to nine inches deep. So that motor can sit way lower in the chassis, get a lower center of gravity. It's gonna aid in car performance. So to kind of wrap all the rambling I've done together, I'd break it down a few different ways. One, are you gonna have enough G-forces for sustained periods of time to starve your pickup tube? Two, is your engine gonna turn enough RPM that it could potentially cavitate the oiling system and require a dry sump? And three, is it within your means? If it's not within your means, don't worry about it. You don't have to build a 9,000 RPM engine that's going to require a dry sump. You know, this oil pump, all day long, 7,400, 7,500, possibly 7,600 RPM for some intervals. No problem, it'll do it, happily. So you really have to just kind of look at your means, look at your application, what are you working on, what are you doing? Is it going to require that next step up to a dry sump system or is a wet sump totally adequate for your goals and budget? You know, it's a huge step to go dry sump financially. Now, I did mention in the beginning of the video, there's a third oiling system, which is an external wet sump. And that type of oil setup is more for a class of racing. If you're turning enough RPM to require a pump that is located outside of the crankcase that has a clean supply of oil, I recommend going dry sump. However, some classes of racing do not allow a dry sump. So at that point, you have to go with what's called an external wet sump. And the way those are gonna work generally is you still have your sump, you have your oil pan. They'll actually usually look something like this, but maybe be a lot deeper. And they'll have their vat of oil still in the motor. It's still a wet sump engine, but they'll hang the pump off the motor and still draw the oil through certain areas. That way the pump always stays pressurized. And again, it's sort of a hybrid. It has the external pump that's going to see a great supply of oil but all the oil is still in that sump. So you have to be intelligent with where you place your pickup ports so that they will always stay under pressure for your setup. Generally, if it's like a circle track car, they're always turning left, right? Always left. So in that case, I would say put your port on this side. It'll always see oil and you'll probably always be good to go. Pretty much all of our stuff though, if it's bad enough of an engine to require an upgrade in an oiling system, we're going straight to a dry sump. It's better for everybody involved, um, for the engine especially. And um, yeah, they work great. There's a dry sump oiling system can turn as much RPM as you want to, and it will not be the fault of your setup. And you can also do a lot of really cool things with these pumps. They make different sections that you can put on the back of them. Like you can have a power steering pump on here. You can have your alternator on here. You can have a, a mechanical driven fuel pump on the back of this. You can keep adding in sections and scavenging sections and actually have enough of them that pull a vacuum on the crankcase and it just never ends. But again, it's big money, race car, race engine stuff. And again, that's only you know the top 1% of most people that are out there. Most guys out there, this engine right here, it'll turn 6,500 RPM, no problem. It'll make you know 600 horsepower, that'll rock. This guy's gonna do some road racing though. He wants the engine as low as he possibly can. Budget's not really an issue. And okay, let's go dry sump. Let's do it. Let's build a rack wicked motor. So that's what I got for y'all this week. Tune in next Wednesday for our next episode. Leave me a comment below if you have any requests that you would like to see in the future. And I'll see y'all later.